What is going on everyone? Welcome back on Blockchains. Today I want to talk about the ZNFT bonsai project and specifically I want to discuss a specific metric, actually a ranking in this case, that might be useful if we want to spot good deals in this space. So uh, briefly on the project, uh, as the name implies, uh, this is a project about bonsais. So the project contains uh, is a series of unique bonsais, uh, 8,888 uh, bonsais. And the, the peculiarity of this project is the fact that um, when you own one of these, you have access to a file that has a AR or VR extension that you can even use with an iPhone, for instance. And this is particularly interesting. They look particularly cool uh, if you uh, want to view them with your phone and project them, for instance, on a table or around where you are. Uh, I, I found this, this feature particularly interesting and unique. Also visually, they tend to present themselves very, very well. And another important feature is the fact that when you own one of these, you also own the relative IP, uh, which means that you can use them also for commercial purposes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, now, I will not go too much in the details of this project. Uh, it's actually fascinating. Also, personal opinion, I believe that these uh, bonds are aesthetically pleasing, to say the least. But uh, the reason why I will not go into the details of the, of the project and all the the quirks and features is because there is so much documentation online already. Twitter already will do if you want to learn more about it. Uh, but um, what it, what it matters is that what matters is that um, this collection is already attracting a lot of attention in the NFT space, but has not blown up already. So, so, uh, for instance, uh, as it happened for the uh, Bored Apes uh, Yacht Club. So. Uh, this could be uh, an interesting uh, new collection if you're looking for something that um, uh, is promising, for instance, or at least this is what I'm doing. And as usual, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Now, talking about metrics, I totally recommend you guys to head over to NFT Rarity because they produce um, rankings for a number of um, actually a number of NFTs. So they rank the CryptoPunks, they rank the Bored Apes uh, and um, many others actually. And the reason why they provide these rankings, these uh, rarity rankings is because uh, they rank them according to their own logic and it could be a good method or at least they offer these uh, possibilities, opportunity to the reader to spot good deals that for instance, uh, spot some entries that may be underpriced uh, compared to their position in this ranking. And if we believe that this ranking is correct, maybe we can spot a good deal, purchase it, and uh, then resell it for a higher price when the market at large we realize of that undervaluation. This is just uh, my speculation of one use case. Uh, the opposite could also be true. Maybe you own something that is overvalued according to this metric and you want to get rid of it to buy something that is more uh, fairly priced according to, to uh, this ranking. And one of the rankings that, that they provide is indeed around, uh, focused on uh, the uh, bonsai by ZNFT. How does this ranking work? So. What they do is that, of course, they highlight all the features that each entry of this collection has. And then they say, OK, which feature has the most rare modalities, so to speak? In this case, for instance, the number of fruit uh, feature is the feature that has the highest number of modalities. There are 25 modalities. There could be the one that has zero fruits, but it could be also the one that has up to 24 fruits. And yet there is only one that has 24 fruits, which makes this feature or this modality, better said, unique because there is no other bonsai that has 24 fruits. And there are only four that have three pieces of fruits attached on their branches. So um, the modalities that are the most rare dictate 
the rarity of the piece. And this metric is very good if we want to look at the uniqueness of the, uh, the actual, the actual uh, entry, the actual uh, bonsai, because of course there is only one that has 24. And so in that uh, respect, it is the most rare uh, because it's the only one that has that specific feature. At the same time, this metric fails to recognize a couple of things that in my opinion are super important. The first one is that um, the bond size might not have certain features. So basically, um, as for the crypto banks, those that have the highest amount of elements of attributes attached to, it, to them are those that are the most expensive typically. In this, in, by and large for bonsais is the same. Why? Because the feature pet, for instance, in the modality non occurs 30% of the cases. All other modalities, for instance, having bamboo, having a mantis, having elder crystal mantis, all have an occurrence rate that is much more scarce, much less frequent than non, than not having anything. And by and large, if you have many entries that have none uh, as a feature, basically like in this case, none as ground cover and none as pet, they don't make it very valuable. By and large, in general speaking, they don't make it very valuable because uh, features that are meant to make the, the bonds more complete, more beautiful are not there. And the absence is the most frequent possible thing. The absence of ground cover is the most frequent type of ground cover, if you know what I mean. The absence of a pet is the most frequent pet modality. Now, if we rank characteristics and, and rarity, sorry, according to this metric device here on NFT rarity, we fail to capture this aspect. Plus we fail to capture the aspect of um, capturing the value of all the, fe the feature holistically. In other words, yes, it's surely pretty sick to own the only bonsai that has this feature here, this modality here. But uh, if, imagine if we had to score them as if they were players. They would suck on many other characteristics. Instead, what, is, what could be the, the player or the bonsai in this case that has the best overall score, so to speak. This is not captured. And to capture this, we need to understand what is the best uh, possible combination across all features. So I wanted to play around with this. And so guys, please follow until the end because I'm, I have something for you in this video. So I wanted to play around with this concept and I decided to create my own metric. And how I created my metric, uh, how I, say, I basically just said, uh, how do I measure the best overall score? So I did something that you should never do, which is basically uh, summing, adding up together ratios. It's something that normally you should never do, but I decided to do it because I said the one that has the most rare values across the entire board, across the entire spectrum of characteristics is the one that will have the lowest uh, combined score, so to speak. And so those that have the lowest number tend to be more or m more rare, rarer across the board, uh, better bonsais, so to speak, across the board. And so I scored using this, this method, this, this uh, um, scoring methodology. And I said, okay, how do I know if I'm accurate or not, if this method is complete BS or if this method is a good method of, of ranking bonsais? What I did was the following. I said, if this uh, metric, the, the NFT reality metric is more, it's close to what, closer to what people think, it's closer to what the market represents uh, and the perception of the taste, the, the rarity, everything basically, then the top 100 under this metric should have an average sale an average sale price, realized sale price, that is higher than mine. 
basically buying any entry uh, in the top 100 using this ranking should give you a higher value in Ethereum terms, in Ether terms, than buying any entry in the top 100 of my method. So I put this to the test. What did I do specifically? I said, okay, let's look at the top 100 ranked according to NFT rarity and I calculated the average realized price for the available data points. Not all of them have been sold, so we don't have data points for all of them. But I said, okay, if you buy any entry at random in the top 100, how much value do you get in Ethereum terms? And you get 0 0.54. Now, if you buy any entry in the top 100, a random entry in the top 100, uh, what is the expected value? What is the average value that you will make? It's 1.3, more or less, 1.2 and change. And um, this basically shows that for the top part of this, uh, of this ranking of, of the collection in general, I have better performances with my algorithm, or at least this is what I'm uh, arguing right now. I'm open to feedback, guys, as usual. The other part that I want to discuss is that for the bottom, uh, for the bottom piece, uh, the NFT rarity ranks tend to perform to, to, to perform better. Why? Because there is more value in buying anything in my top, in my bottom 100, than there is in the NFT rarity group, which means that they're more accurate in representing the um, the bonsais with less value. So. I've done the ranking for the entire data set. I have ranked all the, um, the 8,888 bonsais uh, and I'm giving the top, top 50 for free. I will put the link in the description below so you can have the top 50 uh, ranked according to my metric uh, for free compared with the one used by NFT Rarity. The prices that I used are updated to uh, today and earlier today, of course, um, and uh, I have also available the entire ranking for the entire data set so that you can compare. You can see how I'm ranking also, I don't know, number uh, 8,000 if you want, number 7,000 if you want. And if you're interested in that data set, you can contact me directly on Twitter. There is a, a, a handle below. And for that one, you guys can make an offer. Uh, if you're interested in acquiring the entire data set with the entire ranking. Thank you very much for your time and see you in the next video.